<clears throat> Hello everyone. Today we we um we will be going over some uh, leak code today. In particular, we are going to be doing the blind 75 in C++. And today we will be going over two sum. Now, to read aloud the question, given an array of integers nums and integer target, return indices of the two numbers such that they add up to target. You may assume that each input would exactly have one solution, and you may not use the same element twice. You can return the answer in any order. So, just to go over the concept of exactly the whole question, one, I'm going to write out some pseudocode to be able to formulate the whole process and put what data structure slash algorithmic technique we are going to use and what do we do with the data and then our output these are the questions that we will be asking ourselves while going over this question and breaking it down so we understand what to do we are going to be translating our uh, stuff from pseudocode all the way to uh, regular C++ code We're going over the example within the given question that we've already set up in place. And so within our example, we're just trying to figure out the relationship between the input, output, and understanding between exactly how this behavior needs to be replicated within our uh, answer. So within the input that we have, we have an array of nums. And arrays usually typically start with 0. So we have 2, 7, 11, and 15 with a target of 9. Within target, this is the value for our given sum that we need to find and we need to return the indices that have already set within our given array so the reason why that we have 0 and 1 already outputted from our given array is because arrays typically start from 0 1 2 and 3 there are technically four different indices that are available but we're finding the specific indices of 0 2 and 7, which is 1 right here, which add up to our target 9. And as highlighted in the explanation, because nums 0 plus nums of 1 equal 9, and then we return 0, 1. So then this um, concept can also be explained for our second and third example, going over example 2. Nums, to be able to start, is that within our array of 3, 2, and 4, and we have a target of 6, we need to find the numbers that add up to 6 within our array. And then our output is 1 and 2. And since arrays start at 0, we have 0, 1, and 2. 2 and 4 add up to 6 altogether. Hence, 1, which will be the value 2, and then 2, which will then be 4. Therefore, our output will be 1 and 2. In example 3, same concept over here. Nums of 3 and 3 add up to our target that we have already been given of 6, with our output 0 and 1, because 3 is at 0, and then 3 is also at 1. So, going over and breaking down the question, what is uh, what exactly is being inputted within our answer? So, we are uh, given an array of integers and a target value, which is our initial input. We're going to be then expanding upon the pseudocode. What do we? What data structure slash algorithm slash algorithmic technique are we going to use? In this case, we are going to use a hash table or we can also use an unordered map but for the sake of time uh, as well we're just going to be focusing on the hash table in particular given a space and time complexity that we will use we will use this following hash table to store the complement values now what is a complement value a complement value by definition from what we've already uh, stated is that so we have already have a number that we are given, we're given our target, already to start, and then we also know that there is bound to be at least one number inside of our array to start with. And if we have our complement, our complement, so array number plus complement is equal to target, because we need two numbers already outputted for target. So we have our complement minus the tar uh, our complement Therefore, as a result from this equation, it's going to be our target minus our array number. I could just probably just do this right here, just to highlight the information. So this is what we're going to output because 
from the explanation of this, we have a rain number plus complement equal to target. Therefore, what we have is that we just need to find at least one other number that's going to add up to the target. And then, what are we going to do specifically once we have our data that we've already made? So, what we will do is that we are going to iterate through our array for each element and check if the complement value exists in the hash table. So why specifically are we checking to see if the complement value exists inside our hash table? Well, the reason being is because while we are going up through our array, we are using the hash table to store and check and see in particular of every single element that we have visited, it's going to be stored inside of our hash table. And then what we are really looking for is that we need to find if the number that is already added inside of our hash table is already matching up with the complement, it will then equal our target that we already have. So I will explain it a little bit later for if the uh, element and the complement add up to the target n exists, we have found a pair which sums up to the target. Just keep it in for notes. And what is our output going to be? Uh, well, our output is already indicated right here. We will return the in indices of the two elements that sum up to the target. That was already clearly explained before. So now what we are going to be doing is that we are going to be adding some pseudocode to be able to break down this entire problem that we already have between our input, what data structure slash algorithm to use, and what do we do with the data along with our output. So I'm just going to take this out for a second, put it up here. So within our given input, what we are going to do is that first, we are going to initialize an empty hash table to store the complement values. I'll just put this over here, actually. And then what we are going to do is that within the next step, we are going to loop over each element in the array. And while looping over the element in the array, we are going to calculate the complement value by subtracting the current element from the target to get our complement. Hence over here, start, and then what we will be doing is that we are going to check if the complement value exists in the hash table. If it exists, return the indices of the current element and its complement from the hash table. If it doesn't exist, insert the current element into the hash table. So that way we can check to see if we've already visited it. And finally with our output, what we will be doing We're going to return an empty array as an edge case over here, just in case. So within our three steps, this is what we will be doing over here. So. It's gonna take up all these sections that we have over here.
typically in C++ is that table to start with. This is how we initialize our first hash table. It's typically considered a map. Maps and hash tables are interchangeable inside of C++ in the STL library. So what data structure are we going to use? And then what we are going to be doing is that two, we're going to loop over the array. Just going to take this part over here. <sighs> going to loop over the given element in the array and every time that we have a given array we're always going to typically have a for loop or for each loop and now we're going to be checking for inside of our for loop that we have is that we are going to uh, create our complement going to check to see if the complement value exists inside of the hash table. So if hash table is indicated up here, uh, count, which is a method that is called inside of our uh, maps operation, typically, uh, we are going to see, have we considered a uh, value that is the value of the complement while iterating up the array uh, to start with. Now, we are going ahead over this. If the complement exists, return indices of the current element and its complement from the hash table. So the way it's going to look like is just typically a return, and then hash table, hash complement is i. And then if it doesn't exist as our edge case, we're going to have right here. right here for emphasis. We The reason why we even insert this uh, index inside of the hash table uh, to start with, which is considered a map in C++, it, and again, it's totally interchangeable, is that we're checking to see in particular is that throughout, while looping the array, we're checking to see if each value that we have uh, visited has been visited. And if it has been visited, then we're putting it inside our hash table to fully check. And then finally, what we are going to do with the data is that return the sum of the indices. See, we are going to be returning the indices of the two elements. And then within our output, because this is exactly what our output is, we are returning in particular the, um, the value that we have with our complement relative to i, because as stated before, is that we are given an array of numbers and at least one number is going to add up to the target, but then we need to find another number to even start with. So this is where our output's gonna be located uh, to start with for our given uh, indices. So I'm just gonna put this output right over here for further notes. And then I'm just gonna put this note over here for the sake of it. I know part of my typing and all that stuff. And then finally for edge case that we have, uh, now that we've already uh, covered inside of our steps between our input, what data structure to use, and uh, what do we do with the data, and then finally our output, what we need to do in particular is then consider for other edge cases at the same time prior to finishing up, and there can be another case, another possibility we would have if there were no elements in the array. So we are going to be returning an empty array to start with, and to test this out, we're going to be running. All right, all the test cases pass. I'm gonna submit this. All right, and it totally works. And to give a rundown of the time complexity for our given solution that we have, 
is that the time complexity is going to be constant, which is O of n, and the space complexity of O of n at the same time. The reason being of why the time complexity is O of n is that the solution requires iterating over the given ray only once. Because a hash table, imagine a hash table or a map in particular, like a series of lockers to begin with, and you have a series of keys and values. What you are trying to do in particular is that you know exactly that you have one value already figured out. Um, but then if you want to find exactly another value that's going to add up and reflect the relationship as stated before, uh, what you will have to do is at first find in particular the, the relationship by, ha by creating a variable that you would then find while looping throughout the rest of the array and finally returning um, both values of your hash table as well as the um, value of your index at the same time. And the reason why that our space complexity is O of n is that the solution utilizes a hash table to begin with to store complement values. In the worst case scenario of uh, within the space complexity is that all elements that we have uh, may need to be stored inside the hash table, which is still going to be constant because it's relative to the size of the given array. And so therefore, within the fact that our solution is in constant factor for both time and space, it is already further optimized at the same time. And uh, I don't think there can be any other um, iterations to further approve. It beats a lot of um, beats a lot of other times as the same point. So, yeah, that was two sum for the most part. Thank you again for uh, tuning in. If you have any other questions and such, feel free to leave them in the comment section. Or if you have any other requests to solve any other problems, I'll go over them and be able to relay and communicate to you folks exactly between the series of steps. Thank you very much.